towards the end of ninth edition, I made a goal of trying to speed paint every single work model that I owned before tenth came out. This didn't happen, but it allowed me to experiment with speed painting skin a bit faster. Before this, I was working on painting Terminators, which was my most recent painting video. And uh, in that process, I learned that I actually really, <laughs> really hate doing what I think some people consider like the more fun or like right way of painting models, which is like just spending a lot of time on each one individually doing every edge highlight. And uh, yeah, batch painting is like way more enjoyable for me. Just seeing everything go from not painted at all to painted quickly is a process I really like as someone whose main interest in painting Warhammer is like trying to paint an entire army. I've painted plenty of works before, but there's always new little ways of like refining stuff and speeding up the process. In this video, I'm going to try and explore that and break down some of the new steps I've been taking for you. I started off by dry brushing everyone for very dark gray, but this felt unnecessary in hindsight, and I think I could have gone straight into this step with the Bronx. And this was followed by dry brushing absolutely everything with Iron Warriors, uh, just to dole out the Bronx because you don't want it to be that dominant. Bronx is supposed to be just like a nice contrast color that makes it look more interesting than if it was just Iron Warriors. It's supposed to be like a subtle texture here. So the Bronx goes pretty heavily in areas that I want to stand out. Uh, this is things like pipes for the war bikes and death dreads and just anything that you don't want to look like the main metal color, put Bronx on and then dry brush Iron Warriors everywhere on top after. The skin I airbrushed with Death World Forest. If you don't own an airbrush, you could get away with doing a light base coat and dry brushing. The main point is to be fast, right? So if you just take like a fairly broad brush and paint carefully, I think you'll get a similar effect to the airbrush. My airbrush even like spilled over on other parts of the model, but we're just laying in our base colors here. I'm going to go over and refine everything and make it tight after. So uh, yeah, don't worry if you get a little bit on other parts of the model. For batch painting, I like trying to get every model to a level where it looks good from far away in the tabletop and then going in and doing them one by one and putting on things like decals and attention to detail and edge highlighting. Uh, I do like doing that stuff, but I like working from a place where they're all like mostly done before you start. Even though like that last 10% of the work can take just as long, sometimes longer than the first step, which takes a model to looking like 90% of the way there. I then airbrushed on a highlight of Ogre and Camo. Unlike GW heavy metal style models, when I highlight, I tend to start with something that's like basically a Xenophall coming down from above. Uh, I want to emulate like where light would actually be falling and call attention to details, but in like large patches. Uh, we're not starting off with like edge highlighting. We're trying to cover broader surface areas. After doing a couple of them, I decided the Ogren camo was a little too light. So I started mixing a little bit of pro acryl yellow green. And if you don't have an airbrush, you could use just a brush with like a relatively thin coat and cover all the muscles like you would a normal second coat, leaving the dark green in the recesses. And again, if you get any on the black, don't worry about it. We're going to repaint over a lot of this later. So it should be okay. At this point, your skin should have a little bit of an identifiable gradient. And then we're going to try and make could pop out even more now. I mixed some more Ogren camo and a lot of Cadian flesh tone into our previous color. I think it ended up being about one to one Cadian flesh tone, Ogren camo, and Pearl Crow yellow green. Lips, the area between the mouth and the nose and knuckles are where we want to focus on the most for this color. And uh, a little bit on the ears too goes a long way. This helps add a sense of like warmth in that the flesh is actually skin, not just like green comic booky fungus, but it like blends in with other models more. Uh, as opposed to like the super bright saturated green that orcs often have, which I do love, but you know, it's a stylistic difference. They're both great. As you can see here, I'm also adding a little bit for like extreme highlights in the same Xenophil style that we did before. For those unfamiliar, Xenophil is like, you're trying to emulate where light would actually be coming down. So just like if he was standing out in the sun, like imagine where that sun would be shining the most and hit only those areas. Uh, this is kind of like a model by model basis. I didn't do this in everybody, but for things like that knob uh, who have like really bright muscles that are everywhere, I think it looks good. Him. I mixed about a two to one ratio of all of flesh to skeleton legion. You could do one to one here too, because these guys have a ton of like skulls and bright areas that the white would be appropriate for. I started covering that because it's actually one of like the largest surface areas. The biggest one is the green on the skin. The second largest is the black. They're going to be goth, so we can leave that alone for now. We're just going to cover it with black acrylic later. And then the third is this area, which is easiest to do before we start doing the black. And the black we can like put on to cover 
cover the white, um, but it's harder to paint the white to cover the black once we have that in. I also picked out any of the larger areas that I wanted to be red later because it's easier to paint red over white than it is black. Another thing I wanted to mention too, before I forget, is I've actually stopped airbrush priming these guys. I use like Army Painter Rattle Can now because I play in tournaments a lot. I noticed that the ones I airbrush prime tend to chip a little bit easier than the ones that I prime with like a rattle can and then leave alone for 48 hours before painting. Uh, that's just the way I'm going to paint now because I mostly play models that get used in tournaments a lot. Probably more than like most people. So if you're not someone who's planning on playing like like literally like hundreds of games with these models, I don't think it'll make a difference. But if you are, uh, you, you might notice a difference. I use these checker stencils I got a while ago. They're originally made for cake decorating. I've tried like miniature specific checkers, but I just happen to like these more than any other ones I've purchased. It's just a great way to break up a surface area that might be a little boring otherwise with some interesting 2D detail. Uh, I use decals for the same purpose. You can also hand paint checkers if you don't have an airbrush. I still do this in areas that are a little too small for the airbrush. For any of the bone areas that have horns attached to them, I started by airbrushing this contrast Imperial Fist color, and then I used some Vallejo Model Wash uh, Rust to create the dark part of the horns. I, I use this stuff constantly. It's great. Um, it's sort of like an enamel paint, but it doesn't smell or give me a headache, and uh, I haven't used oil paints as much recently as a result. I like how the orange looks so much that I started using it to make gradients at the edges of like just normal skull areas and parts that didn't have horns too. Um, it ties in the metal and the white area really well. So you can use it to correct any of the metal area that you got a little bit too much white on. For any of the models that didn't have white or skull parts, I still applied a little bit of the orange over their metal just to make it blend in with the models that did. Uh, again, we're painting an army, so I want everything to look like really cohesive. This Death Dread has a ton of metal areas that blend in with the white. You can see the effect the most here. Like where the skull ends in the black area and the metal parts begin, uh, there's a lot of orange in there. I use a little bit of the dark rust color produced by Vallejo as well. If you want to do something like this, but don't want to get a bunch of expensive new paints, uh, Agrax Earthshade works good. Or any of the light brown GW washes mixed up known oil will probably make something kind of similar. But if you are down to get something new, I would highly recommend the Vallejo washes. I do like how they look more. The next step is to base coat all of the red areas. This is the only base coat that I applied by hand. The reason I airbrush is partially to make like smooth gradients that look a little like softer than you would normally get. But the main reason is because base coating by hand fucking sucks. I hate it so much. I try to keep it to a minimum whenever possible, but I felt like these areas were too small to airbrush effectively without masking a lot, which is just about as much work. And uh, the Duncan Rhodes paints are great. I feel like as advertised, I really only need two thin coats and they go on pretty smooth. It went on much easier on the areas that painted white first. Things like the brim of his hat are too small to do that initial pass on, but like it sped up painting the hair and the banner pole a lot. Base looking by hand is probably fine. I think I'm the problem. I'm just very spoiled and love airbrushing. At this point, everyone's basically battle ready. I forget how long this took, but it wasn't much more than a day. Um, maybe like a day and a half tops for everybody. So considering the amount of time it took to get here, I was pretty happy with how they look so far. I find a good way to get through batch painting is by spacing the steps out between fun steps and not so fun steps. So to celebrate finishing the red, I started putting dirty down rust over all the metal parts. I look at photo reference of real rust during the step a lot of the time, or at least I used to. I feel like at this point I can kind of just wing it, but that helped me a lot. It's just like looking at actual rust on tanks and trying to get an idea of how it would form. For anyone unfamiliar, dirty down rust is not like a paint. It's like a very specific, well, I mean, I guess it is, but it's like a weird form formula that just creates this rust effect looks insane. I don't know anything else like it. It's a pretty unique thing to do. Um, I used to use a lot of like oranges and whites mixed together and watering them down and putting them under recesses, but uh, this is the same thing with less effort. It should probably be illegal, both because it makes mini painting too easy and because it feels like it's going to give me cancer. Next step is to apply some Reichlin flesh shade to a recessed areas of the skin and also the teeth. Here's what they look like at this stage. Uh, if you wanted to, you could just base them and put some varnish on there and call them battle ready. With the wash between the cracks and the skin and the teeth done, uh, I think they look like pretty presentable. If it's a scenario like this where I'm painting a lot of models, but I don't need to use all of them right away, I'm just painting them together for the sake of batch painting, uh, what I'll typically do is get everybody to this level and then start focusing on the ones that I want to play with the most. 
And circle back to the rest later in time. That's what happened with the war bus and the knobs here. Besides the trucks, out of all of these, they were the models that I was the most excited to use. So at this stage, it started to leave the others aside and focus on them. I based everybody with some AK-47 light desert sand. But beyond that, my goal for the rest of them is just to make them look like presentable on the tabletop, but missing things like edge highlights and some of the finer details that I'll eventually go back to, but we're not going to worry about those for now until the knobs and war boss are done. To get the trucks to blend in more and because the sand is like a really defining feature of these models uh, they don't have bases obviously so i just sprayed the tracks with a pretty similar color yellow and i used some pretty thin yellow imperial fist contrast on the bases too to shade them again applied through an airbrush but you could do this by hand if you had a big like makeup brush or something in a tiny bit more fire friend light rust wash watered down this time you want it to be thin i think it's like too strong if it goes straight onto the base as is through the airbrush a really small amount is all you need i try and make patches primarily around the edge of the base I Initially, it was just like completely surrounding them. So it was like a vignette basically, but I feel like it looks better if it's like a little more random and you just do like a couple dark patches here and there. I then did a very light dry brush of arid earth to unify them all a bit. If you wanted more saturated bases, you could probably skip this step. I don't think it's essential, but I wanted something a little bit brighter because that's how most of my other bases are. I have a ton of different grass types I use. Some are Vallejo, some are from Army Painter, some are like old GW ones. It's just like a different assortment of deserty looking plants. I feel like using a variety of plants can look bad sometimes but if you paint them all a little bit to unify them it adds just like some visual variety that feels good to me painting them was really straightforward i just dry brushed some more arid earth on top and then i outlined them with a little bit of light rust wash just to surround the plant so there's like a vignette around them back to the knobs and war boss it was decal time i have tons of old decals that i've been hoarding for years i've also been on a big banner making kick uh, i have another video i'm gonna do soon about making banners i won't go into it too much today but basically you just take like some thick paper, you print out your design, and then you cover it in Mod Podge. Something that's very important in Warhammer that I feel like people don't talk about that much is that models break over time, and what do you do with all those models that you've spent so much time on that are now very broken and sad? This guard in particular lost his arm years ago, and I replaced it with a kill saw, because I thought it would be funny. But recently, all his friends have started to chip and lose their arms a bit, too. Like this guy who lost his hand in an accident recently and is now holding an electric guitar. These guys weren't primed that well the first time I I painted them and they could have been varnished more too so I'm going over and repriming and just trying to match any areas that are broken and any areas that are chipped I'm repriming and then just painting the green the same way that I'm doing it under the rest of the boys right now to match I reprimed them by hand with Vallejo primer fortunately I still have all the colors I used to originally paint them so after applying the primer on chipped areas I just went over with the same base coat color and blended it in and applied some new highlights in the same method I applied a bunch of decals to all the knobs and boys then covered them with a coat of gloss varnish followed by a coat of matte because I really don't want them to chip. I added some more small freehands and edge highlights to everything too. The red I just highlighted with demon red which is like the next paint up in the Duncan Rhodes like paint little chart that he has. And the skin was just painted with ogren camo. I didn't do any of the metallic highlights yet because I know that the varnish really dulls them out and I didn't want the matte varnish to make them lose their shine. So that's what we did next. I used mithril blade to highlight the silvers and then I used balthasar gold to base code the like little metal detail areas. The mithril silver was a little bright. I think it works for the war boss because I want a lot of attention to be drawn to him but for the rest I ended up using a slightly darker metallic for the highlights. And that was it. Here's a shot of the whole gang with the knobs having all their highlights and stuff added on. There's still a lot of models like the flash kits that I want to add more to. These kill cans need some work too. I gotta paint the glow in their eyes and the base rim black. I plan on finishing the rest soon but even if I didn't they'd at least be like battle ready and I could take them to a game and not feel like they're completely unpainted or like it feels bad to have them on the tabletop. I'm a little burned out on playing right now, so I'm going to start doing a lot more hobby videos for the next few weeks. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff upcoming. The banner video is almost done. And I want to do some videos that don't require an airbrush too, because I know that's something people request a lot and it'd be an interesting challenge to try. Uh, if you're new here, please leave a like or comment. It would mean a lot to me. And subscribe if you want to do that. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be around. Thanks for coming by.